Yeah, that's that's pretty convincing win. Um, obviously, starting the tournament as well as we did in the first two games, um, not easy games. Um, but I thought the guys played really well today. Uh, coming into it, you'd you'd expect a really tough test, and I, we always do when we play against Australia. I thought we bowled again brilliantly and fielded brilliantly um, and put Australia under pressure, created opportunities earlier probably than we have done in the past. Um, but it just goes to show how well that we have bowled and, and adapted to conditions um, and even not letting them get away to a score that, that, that might have been you know, a bit more of a tricky chase, say a 140 or a 150. Um, I thought the bowlers did a great job. Uh, has Joss ever hit the ball more sweetly than that? There's actually a game that we were talking about while he was, you know, going bananas out there um, back in 2016, where he scored a, I think it was a 43 or 46 ball hundred against Pakistan here in a in a 50 over game, uh, where very similarly he just seemed to hit the middle of the bat over and over again. Um, he's obviously one of the best players in the world, um, and when he comes off like today, it's it's very difficult to to stop him. And, um... Three wins out of three, all chasing. I mean, would you, would you like to win a game batting first? Um, well, I think we're going to have to throughout the tournament. Um, we, we've, we've spoken about it, what might change, if anything. Um, but the thing that I liked about the way that we played today was conditions didn't change, Jude didn't come in. Um, you know, we continue to try and play our way um, and not try and pace our, our run. Um, unless we get pegged back, still try and come hard, and, and guys did that. Hi, Owen. Um, week in, you're making it look easy. Does this England side have anything or anyone to fear? Uh, here, I think every game that we go into, we, we pay every opposition the amount of respect um, that, that they deserve, um, regardless of, of the name of the country on the shirt. Uh, I think that's why you know we can perform probably more consistent than we have done in the past, um, and I think sort of moving forward, it's it's always a matter of looking at ourselves and testing ourselves to tr to try and continue to get better, as opposed to to looking at opposition. And just on yourself, you've only had to face seven balls all tournament. Do you think that's a measure of how good your cap captaincy has been in the field? Yeah, obviously captaincy is only reflected on performance of the players within the side. We, we've had a really good run of it so far. Um, I think the whole of our top seven, eight guys we will need at some stage. You know, we go to Sharjah in, in two days' time and then again, I think it's in five days' time on, on Saturday, um, where ch you know, we'll probably be taking more out of our comfort zone than we have been both here and, and, and Abu Dhabi. So again, another challenge that that we're looking forward to. And is rotation on your mind over the next two games? No. And what about the decision on not using Moeen with the ball today? Any thoughts on that? Yeah, um, it's a, 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 just a reflection on, on my captaincy. Um, the matchups at the time didn't suit. Um, they do suit for some of the Australian players, but they were already dismissed. Um, and I thought that worked really well. You know, Moeen is, uh, quite a relaxed guy and, and knows the role that he plays both before the game and during the game that's always communicated uh, across all of the bowling unit we try and adapt and, and talk about what might work on the, on the wicket against different players um, and today you know fortunately he wasn't needed we'll take one more in the room from dean wilson and a few off uh, off zoom go ahead dean um, even though you play australia quite a lot i, I don't imagine you get those kind of results very often um, against them. When you're out there in the middle and it's all going so well, can you stop and enjoy it at all? Can you kind of think about how much fun you're having? Oh, I think as hard as I try, I, I struggle to, just knowing that you, you're playing against such a strong side and you know, they bat really deeply. And when um, Finchie bats with the guys down the order, there's always that element of you know how much he can hurt you if he gets going. And the difference of one over can be the difference in a game. So I, I thoroughly enjoyed the chase and I'm enjoying myself now. Um, but at the time, I'm uh, trying to you know, trying to manoeuvre things that restricts the total that we're chasing to, to the minimum amount. And, and just on Joss uh, quickly again, um, 
down the years, people have called him a freak and a genius and all these things that we've seen through his performance. Um, is he taking the game t to a new level, do you think? Do you think that he's showing us things that even surprise you? Yeah, absolutely. I think he's, he's, he's certainly one of our players, and there are, there are a few of them that are the forefront of uh, change in the game. They're not a, like he's one of the best players in the world, but yet he's still trying to improve his game and get better against every single bowler that he faces. It's not just targeting bowlers that might suit him, it's every bowler. So when you've got guys that are at the forefront of, of, of change within the game and like positive change, taking the game forward type stuff, it's, um, it says a lot about the guy. Okay, we've got a few requests on Zoom. We'll just take one each from the, from the following. Let's go with David Charles were first, and then uh, Matt Roller. Go ahead, David. Thanks, Danny. Hi, Owen. Um, given the way you started the tournament, have you reassessed your opinion about uh, being second favourites, or do you still think that's the case? Um, I, I still think that's the case. Uh, obviously, um, chasing in... in uh, all three games has its advantages. I think the way that the bowlers have bowled has, has been outstanding. Um, the favourites in the tournament have only played one game. Uh, you know, you can't just judge one team on one, one particular game. So they probably have a lot more to show um, as conditions probably get tougher. OK, let's go to Matt Roller and then um, Scott Bailey. Yeah, hi Owen. Um, could you just speak a bit, please, about Chris Wokes' spell with the new ball and his performances across the tournament? Yeah, Wokes has been excellent. Um, I think over the years, his strengths, you know, have, have been epitomised tonight. He's one of the best new ball bowlers in in white ball cricket in the world. Uh, he's accurate. His pace is up. Uh, he's very confident in in his all round skills. It's not just about hitting a line in length or, try, or trying to get the ball to move. Um, in our first game that we played here, he bowled a beautiful slower ball to dismiss Evan Lewis. So the growth within his game is, is huge, even though he's been uh, right on top of it over the last four or five years. Let's go with Scott, please. Yeah, Alan, did you, did you get flashbacks at all to the 2019 World Cup semi-final, the way that game started, especially with Chris Wokes doing the job early and then even with... Jason and, and Joss doing the job of the bats so aggressively at the top of your own? Uh, not, not really, just different challenges. I think uh, our record at Edgebaston is incredible um, and had been in the lead into that World Cup for the last four years. Uh, we take a lot of confidence playing at that venue and on that wicket. Uh, obviously a different challenge here um, against the side who's, who's trying to adapt as, as hard as we are to, to conditions. So just a different feeling with, with the two different games. And then we'll take three more, um, starting with Arkham and then Rohit Juglan, please. Uh, yeah, um, Morgan, uh, most matches uh, have been low scoring around like 130s, 140s. Um, do you have a better idea about the pitch and uh, do you foresee uh, some more runs being scored and especially when we're going to uh, the semi-finals and finals? Uh, maybe 170, 180, do you see that? Yeah, I, I think that's a good question. I think this, with the semi-finals and finals being Abu Dhabi, Dubai and then Dubai, uh, you'd probably foresee the, the, the average scores being probably around par, so between 160 and 170, uh, maybe a little bit higher depending if the Jew comes in. Um, but as, as far as Sharjah goes, we haven't seen a you know, a, a really flat wicket at Charger, so I think it'll just continue to be challenging. Okay, we'll row it, and then we'll finish with Lewis. Go ahead, uh, row it. Uh, thank you, and congratulations. Uh, from here to Sharjah, I know it's early, but uh, you played match game there as a KKR captain. Tell us how much confident are you for, for that venue, especially, uh, for, for that venue, especially the way your spinners are bowling? Yeah, I, I, I actually don't think that you just have to have good spinners to do well at Charger. I think you need to have good seamers as well. Um, during the IPL, we, we sort of did both. Uh, we had two really good spinners, but also we had good quicks in amongst it. Um, and the wickets that we play, did play on had variable bounce that actually favoured the, the seamers a little bit more. Um, so within, within our England squad, we, we do have options um, that we, we will look to use and trying to adapt both against Sri Lanka and, and South Africa. 
And last one, Lewis, thank you. Hi, Owen. Um, there was a bit of a suggestion tonight that um, Australia, a bit of a limiting factoring factor for Australia might be um, that they haven't played a whole bunch of T20 cricket together, even though they're made up of you know, individually talented players. To think about your own team, is the fami familiarity with roles um, you know, coming into a tournament, is that particularly important? I think roles in any, any side is, is very important. Um, I think the only time that we've had a, a full-strength T20 side over the last two and a half years was in March in India for five games. But apart from that, we haven't had a full-strength squad out. Okay, we're done. Thank you very much, everyone.